Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just love that song. I could listen to that song all the time, boy. The Lord despoils the enemy. He is the hope in our heart. He is. He just is. Everything. And he should be everything to us. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch this message, Lord. You will anoint it to be heard and received. Father, I thank you that you are our ally. And you bless those that bless us. And you also curse those that curse us. That's what your word says, Lord. You will be an adversary to our adversaries. Your word says that, Lord. And your word also says you'll be an enemy to our enemies. We have you as our protection. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is the word of God that I'm fixing to speak right here. And a lot of people, they'll not, they'll just... Look over it lightly. Mock it, whatever. Well, go ahead and mock it. It's the word of God and it will happen and it will come to pass. Hallelujah. This devotional today, God is our ally by Charles Spurgeon. I want to go over to Exodus 23. 22. Let's see here. But if thou shalt indeed obey, in other words, be obedient, you hear and you regard his voice. His voice. The Lord's voice. In his word and in your heart as well. And do... All that I speak, in other words, all that I command, then I will be an enemy. I will be hostile unto thine enemies. He will be an enemy unto thine enemies. If we obey his voice, And do all that he commands us to do. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, unto your adversaries. And then he also says, and an adversary. I'll also be an adversary. I will assault, distress, and lay siege unto thine adversaries, thy enemies. Those that trouble you. Now this is the word of God. I'm going to read it again. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. And do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy. And an adversary. Unto thine adversaries. Okay. I'm going to read Gills on this as well. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. Or hearken. Hearken, listen, pay attention, (laughs) and diligently and constantly observe and obey in whatever he shall direct and order, and do all that I speak, all that I speak by him, and whatsoever he had spoke, or was about to speak, okay, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries, which they should either meet with in their passage through the wilderness, or when they came into the land of Canaan, signifying hereby that he would protect them from them, subdue them under them, and give them victory over them as that they should be utterly destroyed and so weigh 
made for their possession of their land. Now, you know, people just take this lightly. I'm going to read the definition of an enemy. A person who hates or is hostile or opposes another person and tries to harm that person. A person who attacks or tries to harm another. A person who feels hatred for, fosters harmful designs against, or engages in antagonistic activities against another. That's an enemy. The definition of adversary. One that contends with, that opposes, that resists. An enemy, a foe, an antagonist, isn't antagonistic toward a challenger, an opposer, a competitor. A lot of the times your enemies and adversaries are, are in competition against you. It's a big thing, competition against you. Now the Lord says, I'm going to read it again, Exodus twenty three twenty two. But if thou shalt indeed obey. Now here's the if here. Did you hear the if? But if thou shalt indeed obey. If you be obedient. If you hear. If you regard his voice. And you do all that I speak. He says, all that I command. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. See that? Pretty explanatory, I think. God is our ally. This is the devotional for today. The Lord Christ in the midst of his people is to be acknowledged and obeyed. He is the vice regent, or that's a person that acts in the name of, the, of another. He's the vice regent of God and speaks in the Father's name. And it is ours implicitly and immediately to do as He commands. We shall lose the promise if we disregard. The precept to full obedience, how large the blessing. Hallelujah. The Lord enters into a league with his people, offensive and defensive. Now, this is pretty serious because over the years we have had many adversaries and many enemies. And it all stems from, of course, the devil and his minions working through people. And when I think about what I'm reading here, and I think about the scripture, and I think about the definitions of enemy and the definition of adversary, I think about those people that have been enemies and adversaries over the years. And I think, according to this word, it has not gone well with them at all. Because when a person wishes harm and tries to do harm and say harm against one of God's people, and they have become the enemy of God's people, then God's going to be their enemy and their adversary. That's what the word says. So it cannot go well with a person like that. And it won't go well with them. This is a serious deal. You don't want to be on that side. You don't want to be an enemy and an adversary of God or his people. Because he takes up the deal. When you become an enemy of his people, an adversary of his people, he takes up the gauntlet, so to speak, and he takes care of it according to his word. 
It's nothing to look at lightly. But we, as God's true people of his church, we we have this blessed thing of protection from our Heavenly Father. And that, yeah, we may get attacked. Things may come against us. Yeah, our adversaries, our enemies. But God's going to take it up. He's going to take care of it. And you know what? For God to be hostile towards somebody, oh, boy, that just makes me, woo, man. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, being hostile towards someone. Well, this is what he said. He will be toward our enemies and our adversaries. He will be. Serious business. The Lord enters into a league with his people, offensive and defensive. He will bless those that bless us. Did you hear that? He will bless those that bless us. And curse those that curse us. God's true people. Now I think about that over the years. Just now. That people have actually done exactly that. With their mouth. And I think about that and I think, whoa. Whoa. Exactly what they're saying is going to come upon them. Because isn't that what the Bible says? What they plan for you is going to come back upon their own head. So those that have spoken things out toward us or any of God's true people, they've spoken it out in evil intent to harm. It's going to come back upon their own head according to the word of God. This is nothing to be jacked with. God is nothing to be jacked with. Nor his true people either. Hallelujah. He will bless those that bless us and curse those that curse us. Definition of bless. A special favor, mercy or benefit. A favor or gift bestowed thereby bringing happiness we do these things to God's people he's going to bless us he said it right there he will bless those who bless us and curse those who curse us definition of curse the expression of a wish that misfortune evil doom etc. befall a person. A prayer or invocation for harm or injury to come upon one. I think about this. We, we have had this happen many times with people cursing us. But see, when I think about it now, I think, oh boy, Lord, exactly what they've said to us to try to curse us and harm us and harm our life is exactly what you're going to allow to come upon them according to your word. And it just makes me, ooh, I'm just like, man, you just don't want to jack with God or his true people. His word, I just read it to you. Because he'll become your enemy. He'll become your adversary. If you do. A person can mock all they want. But I tell you what. God's word is true. His word will come to pass. And if a person is doing this. And then they start having stuff go on. You're going to know that's why it is. In the way that it is. Because the exact thing you have spoke. On one of God's true people is coming back upon you according to the word of God. That's what happens. We have a protection, y'all, as true believers. Our God protects us. 
that should give us such comfort. That God's going to take care of business concerning our enemies and our adversaries. He will do it. God will go heart and soul. You know, this definition of curse, let me go back to that for a minute. A prayer or invocation for harm or injury to come upon one. You know, people can actually pray witchcraft prayers. Because this is exactly what they're doing. In a subtle way, wishing harm. They think things should be a certain way or we should act a certain way or this or that. So they're praying in in that way to that effect. That's witchcraft. And God says he's going to curse those that curse us. God will go heart and soul with his people and enter into deepest sympathy into their position, the position they happen to be in in this fight against the enemies and adversaries. He will step right in. What a protection this affords us. We need not concern ourselves about our adversaries when we are assured that they have become the adversaries of God. If Jehovah has taken up our quarrel, we may leave the foemen in his hands. That's a serious thing to fall into the hands of an angry God that has made himself the adversary, and the enemy. That's a very serious thing. So far as our own interest is concerned, we have no enemies. But for the cause of truth and righteousness, we take up arms and go forth to the conflict. In this sacred war, we are allied aligned, allied with the uh, eternal God. Man, if you got the eternal God on your side, who else in this world do you need? That's such an awesome thing. Let's really get a grasp of that. And if we carefully obey the law of our Lord Jesus, he is engaged To put forth all his power on our behalf. Wherefore, we fear no man. Now this should give the true believer walking and obeying in what the Lord is saying to do. It should give you such a comfort today. But the adversary of God. They're not going to have a comfort. There's going to be a fear there, and well so. You don't want to be the enemy and adversary of God or his people. And right now, if you've placed yourself, anyone has placed themselves in that position... And they know they have. You better get on your face and repent. I pray God give you that conviction. Where you do repent. And you do turn. And and then you no longer are the enemy. And adversary of God or his people. Because a continued enemy. And adversary of God and his people. Is going to end up in the pit of hell. Make no mistake about it. So I pray right now, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will penetrate the hearts of all the listeners. Give those true believers, Lord, such a comfort in knowing your protection is so near and so mighty. And those that have been your adversary and the adversary of your people, 
bring a conviction, a piercing conviction on their heart right now, Lord, that they repent and they turn this very day. In Jesus' name, amen.